How'd you like that one? <laughs> Sounded like machine gun. Oh, is that what that sounds like? Smell like... I had no idea. You <laughs> 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 son of a bitch. Welcome, everybody! Sorry, let me, let me clear my throat here. <laughs> Cleansing your palate. Uh, <laughs> okay, alright, I'm, I'm better now. You're alright? I'm good now. Alright. Okay. Alright. Alright, let's go. Welcome back to Power Drinking Retrospective, yes, people. Yes, welcome back. Today we are going to be discussing Jackal, the running gun. Well, the driving gun. Driving gun. Because <laughs> you drive around the old in a tank in a jeep. That's right. It's, yeah, it's really not a tank. It's a jeep. Yeah, it's yeah. a jeep. So you're basically you're rescuing prisoners of war from mm -hmm. this bad... Uh, enemy base and big bad whatever the fuck whatever the fuck it is but you just have to destroy it uh, and uh, rescue all the POWs that you can so that's right you're you got two modes of attack shoot up with your machine gun and then you can shoot anywhere with your fucking grenades lasers rockets whatever the fuck. that's yep and There's the no game lasers. and the game is classic konami as fuck it is 1988. This game was released September 1988, developed and published by Konami. Yes, sir. Uh, six six levels. Six levels. Six levels. Uh, they're each divided divided up. You know, you're regular, having a good time. Regular level style. <laughs> just regular level style. They're, it's, they're uh, divided. So, no, the reason why. Okay, here, let's just just calm down a little. All bit. All right, baby. Okay. <laughs> What? Okay, so <laughs> the arcade. This game was was released in arcades before it yes, became it a home port, and it was actually called Top Gunner, which is funny because it when it came to the Nintendo, they renamed it Jackal because they didn't want to call it Top Gunner because it was too close to uh, the 1987 game that they released called Top, Top Gun. Gun. Exactly. So they wanted to change it, so they they did change it. But one of the notable uh, changes that they made to the game is that the arcade game, instead of having six stages that were that were separated by boss characters or boss fights, um, they had basically just one long stretch of level that was spliced with those boss characters. Very Abidox. Very Abidox and uh, and and uh, a very uh, what's the other shoot shoot what the name what uh, Thunder Thundercade. That's kind of like Thundercade. Where everything just rolls right into the next level, into the next level, and that's it. Yes, sir. So, um, yeah. I mean, there's really not a whole lot. Are you okay? Else. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a fun ass game. I, I like it. It was one of our better displays of teamwork. Somehow, we Ooh. actually did pretty good two player, which hell yeah, we did. Which we don't really do all that often. Chippendale proved that. So, yeah. Yeah. But no, we, we did fucking great, man. We didn't have to use the continue until like the last, last fucking level. Yeah, until the last level. We it made it incredible. Through, yeah, we made it through stages one God, through five damn. in no time whatsoever and didn't use a single continue. And then we just got our, our butts handed to us in level six until we finally beat it. Yeah. So so in this, in the NES version, uh, you, had, you could upgrade your rockets or your grenades. It turned from grenades to rockets to uh, rockets that spread out little fires to rockets that shout out. Fucking fire. Four directions. Four directions. Mm -hmm. um, in the arcade version, I guess, if you died, you only went down one power level. So if you had the four-way rockets, you would go down to the sideways rocket. In the NES version, you're not so fortunate. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you die once, and you start from the beginning. Top heavy as fuck. It is top heavy. Um, yeah. There were some other changes, too, between the arcade and the NES version. There was a few. There was an inclusion of, of different, um, different different bosses. bosses. Yeah, different bosses. I think they were... Um, Two-player was, uh, because of the limitations, they had uh, the, the Jeep colors were actually different in the Nintendo version. I think they were the same in the uh, in the arcade. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. But you had the, the green and the red in the Nintendo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I couldn't see. No. <laughs> you colorblind bitch. Couldn't see... <laughs> That's fair. So, <laughs> moving on to difficulty. Yes. What do you give this game for a difficulty? Honestly, it can't get higher than middle five. of the road. It's five That's what fuck. I say. Yeah, five yeah. is definitely. Um, honestly, the game itself, I mean, we blasted through the first five levels. And I had never played the game before. No. And I had no 
problems whatsoever. It wasn't until level six where the game really got difficult. And even then, it wasn't anything that couldn't have been overcome. It was just a lot more stuff was being thrown at you. Yeah, the learning curve is definitely very, very yeah. fair in this game. It is. Every level, they introduce a new enemy type or whatever, mm -hmm. in addition to the other things. Some things might start shooting faster, but nothing really gets overwhelming. Um, the real trick is, like you said, when you die and you lose everything, you're shit out of luck. Yeah. You're just, you it's, it, it gets very, very difficult to overcome those obstacles because they start shooting so fast, you get pinned really easily. Because some of those turrets just go ape shit on you. They do. And while you can get fight like uh, weapon power ups, there is never at any point is there a speed up. And so no. the bullets are still coming faster at you and you still move the same slow speed. So it's very hard to outrun bullets and it's very hard to in some areas of level six we had a lot of difficulty in just trying to progress because of how fast those bullets were coming at us and trying to take out the turrets. It just it ended up being difficult. But in that sense, that was really a lot of the, the, the difficulty was from that. And so that's yeah. why, I honestly, I can't give it higher than a middle of the road. No. Five, five all day. It was limited continues. Was. I think we got down to our last yes, continue we before we beat it. Three but, continues. Yeah, so, I mean, that could potentially kick it up a, a grade. But I, to be fair, I really don't think it would. No, but at the same time, you start off with four lives, and I believe yes. the zero counts, so technically you get five lives. Yeah. And then... One-ups um, are pretty and easy. Yeah, one-ups are pretty prevalent in the game, because I yeah. think at one point we each had like six or seven. Yeah, we did um, very well. We didn't so, die yeah. the first whole two levels. So, I mean, there's there's plenty of, of, of chances to get one-ups and, and to get uh, life-ups so that you're not really dipping into that the, the continue reserves yeah so it really doesn't get too terribly difficult at any point no, especially if you're playing one player so you have to rescue the whole idea of the game is to rescue the pow's um you do that by blowing up a building they come out they get into your jeep and then you drop them off at a helipad mm -hmm. um if you're playing single player you get every single guy yeah <laughs> there's no one to compete for yeah so, that's so be a lot of score there. that's a lot of score a lot it's of a lumps. lot of lives man yeah so i mean that's yeah, it honestly, middle of the road definitely feels like where it's at. Mm -hmm. That last level, whoo, whoo, baby, that's Got a rough, difficult. That's a rough one, especially once you uh, once you blow up the uh, the big base and then it uh, reveals the uh, the end tank. It shoots out the really, the really random Cheetos. And Cheeto shit. fire laser. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, even just some of the enemies, you had those helicopters that would come oh, out. Yeah. What is with games and making killer fucking helicopters? I don't know, but they have such erratic patterns, and they're shooting oh. in, like, different directions where it always seems to, like, home in on you. I, you know, they was, were rough. Yeah, yeah, it sucked. Then you had, uh, there were a couple points where there was guided missiles that would come at you. So it's like that last level really kicks it up. So if you mm -hmm. really don't have those upgrades, you're going to be doing a lot of scrambling to, to avoid everything. Very true. Um... There's landmines that'll pop up when you get close to them. So, like, proximity landmines, which is not terrible. They're pretty easily overcome if you pay attention to where you're going. You just gotta slow down. Yeah, you can't go balls a-blazing. <laughs> I, I did, I did not get... died once. I think, yeah, I was gonna say, I don't re even recall getting blown up by a landmine, but you, I probably did once. The only reason you did was because there was a guy on top of it, and oh, I don't think you saw it. Right, that's so, probably what it was. Yeah, it so. wasn't that bad. But yeah, you're definitely right. Middle of the road, we got to the last level before we even needed to continue. Mm -hmm. You had never played it. Yeah, I never played it before. And, I mean, for that, you did amazingly well. Uh, my hat's off to you, man. Wow. You you really did well. Wow, thank you. For yeah, somebody yeah. who tells me that I suck at video games. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty impressive. So, there you go. Five right. difficulty. Let's move on to the f f fun. What would you give Jackal for fun? So... <sighs> Okay, so I don't have any sentimentality to this game because I had never played it before we had actually played it. Um, <clears throat> and you may hate me for this, but honestly, as far as fun goes, I would probably give this one the same. I would give it a five, where it is a fun game. And I think that this game, the, the strength of it lies in playing it two-player versus yeah. just playing it one-player. Yeah. Because I think that this game was developed really well for two players in mind versus just the one player in mind. Yeah. Um, as with any Konami game, it's actually, I mean, it, it, it's somewhat short. There's only six levels, and the levels themselves are not terribly long. 
Um, the music is absolutely great. Yeah, although, it's great as hell. Although I think that Konami had some some better music in other games. Contra, of course, Super Contra were just they had fantastic soundtracks. Yeah. Um, yeah Bucky O'Hare had an incredible <laughs> soundtrack. Um, this one, it was good. It was Konami good, but it it kind of, I don't know. It, it's they did use the same songs middle, a couple yeah, times. It was middle of the road. Um, I know that this game it, it it came out very early on in uh, in the Nintendo's life cycle, at least in the uh, in in America. Uh, it came out in 1988. And so the graphics were not terribly great. Um, yeah. They were they were pretty bland, um, and I think that some of the backgrounds could have been spruced up just a little bit more. But at the same time, though, like I said, the game was was very playable. The hit detection was pretty good. Um, yeah. There was a couple of enemies where you had to be pretty spot on with your hits, but <laughs> honestly, as far as you taking damage and you getting hit, the hit detection was pretty spot on. Yeah. Um, and the game itself was, <clears throat> like I said, it was made for two players, and they Konami knew how to make a two-player game, and that's something that they always knew how to do, and so it really, you get the most out of it when you play a two-player. I agree. So. I personally am going to give this game a six. I mean, I, I did play this one I, as a, more of a late teen rather than a kid. Sounds mm. like we had this growing up. Mm. But I remember playing it a little bit later in, in, in my teen years. Um, like you said, music was good. I mean, it's it wasn't Konami's greatest, no, but greatest it was still good. thing, but it was still mm -hmm. it was better than, I would say, a lot of soundtracks on the NES. Yep. Um, you're right, graphics were okay, but every level felt environmentally different. Yeah. Um, so that was good. Nothing really felt like you were um, back in this fucking level again. Like, yeah, no, that's every, true. Everything that's was true. distinct feeling. Yeah. And like I said, the enemies were very... Uh, varied. <laughs> they were. They, they always threw a new enemy at you every so often to keep you on your toes. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, certain levels. Yep, yeah. yep. Uh, the game to me felt like, even though it was only six levels, it felt the perfect length. It was definitely. It hit that sweet spot where it was just long enough before it would start to get stale, but not too long to where you get annoyed with it. It was. It was long enough to not be complaining about how short the game was. Yeah. But it was. Short enough so that you weren't complaining that this game is still going on. It should be done by now. <laughs> yeah. um, it did. It, you're, you're right. It really did hit that sweet spot for uh, for the, the length of the game. Yeah. I think. And I th the game controlled very, very well. It did. It, it was really... There are other games that, that this one reminds me of. Um, Ikari Warriors. Mm. That game's mm -hmm. hard as hell to play. Yes, it is. It's very slow. You control like shit. You're Sluggish. A, you're a very big target. This one actually felt fair for a lot of, like like you said, the hit detection was very crisp. Yeah. If you got hit, you knew you got hit. And that's one thing I think this game gets a lot of credit for is the fact that you could see every bullet. Usually in shooters like these, every so often flicker issues would prevent you from seeing certain bullets. Mm. When it thunder came, oh, yeah. we had that issue a lot. Yes, we did. And this game, I swear to God, if, if I remember watching it right, it never lost graphics. We never, uh, we never flickered. I don't even think. Was there even any slowdown? Uh, they very, very, very minimal. Very, very minimal. Yeah. But like, but like, Thundercade is a perfect example where the game itself was. They did not know necessarily how to do two player because the more oh, one player God. shot, then their bullets, the other player's bullets, would literally phase out. Where they wouldn't even show up, they wouldn't even. I don't even think that they would count as shots. No, you couldn't shoot. You basically shared. Couldn't shoot. You basically shared. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You basically shared the bullet amount with you and your partner. In this, it's completely yeah. uh, independent, and Konami knew what they were doing. The game ran beautifully. You know what? I I would be willing to. I, I'll up it to that six. I yeah. think that this. I think that this was actually. It was well. It's just because I still think that the game itself. Is really it is middle of the road where yeah, it's bland, but yeah. the fact that it's so well done as for a two player uh, experience, yeah, that's what really makes this game. And it I think really that did. this is why I think Jackal is actually one of the more well known games of Konami. And I honestly do think that that's why it is is because the game was so well balanced for a two player. Definitely, it definitely felt very like. Well, like you said it was built for what it was. Yeah, yeah. They they definitely said you're going to be playing this, this with a friend or a brother or a sister or whatever, mm -hmm. rather than you're just going to go at this alone. Exactly. This yeah. game would be rough alone. Yes, it, it would. 
It'll but be a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah it'd be hard. So on. that cool, cool. Six it is. Six it is. Five for difficulty. Six, six for, for fun. fun. So let's move on to price points. What'd you pay for Jackal, my friend? I paid three ninety nine for this game. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. According to PriceCharting.com, video goes for nine dollars and forty four cents. The video goes for nine dollars and forty four cents. Fuck me, the game. On this game. <laughs> what do you give this video? Nine dollars and forty four cents. <laughs> Jackal goes for nine dollars and forty four cents. Do you feel that is worth it? I honestly do. Absolutely. I think I think you will definitely get your money's worth out of this game. You'll get classic Konami greatness. Um, I mean, it was very hard for them to screw was, up. Yeah, it was very hard for them to screw up back then. Um, really good music, great experience, especially if you're playing this game two player. If you like run and gun uh, games, this game is honestly it's it's a really great uh, game in the genre. Absolutely, I would plug so, this in again and play it. Absolutely, you know, it's one of those where it, mm -hmm. it, it's 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 definitely if you were over and we were having a couple drinks, I would definitely play Jack. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so I mean, absolutely, nine forty four is worth it. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over it. Definitely worth it at at that point, especially if it's under ten dollars. Then this is one of those gems under ten dollars that you oh, should yeah. you should definitely be uh, searching out. And I'm pretty sure it's a very common game. Uh, it's it is extremely common yeah. because it sold a lot of copies, and there's just a lot of copies out there. Yeah, I think I remember so. seeing very many multiple copies at every store we go to. Absolutely. So there you go, man. There it is. That is Jackal. That's Jackal. Top Gunner. Top Gunner. Not to be confused with Top Gun, starring Tom Cruise. In theaters near you. The boys. <laughs> well, well, see. <laughs> say this up on Facebook. Say this up on video. I mean, Twitter. Go to PowerTripGaming.tv. It'll take you right to the channel. You can watch all our other amazing videos. You can. And link in the description below. You can check out our playthrough of Jackal, where we actually did do pretty good, and me and Andy actually looked like a team. Pretty good damn team, too, I might add. Pretty good, because I had never played before. And I coached his coached his way through it. No, he didn't. No, not really. No, I that, that was all me. You did good, though. You did, did. You did good, kid. You done good, kid. There we go. I can't. Real good. Yes, I've, hmm. Yeah, this was an enjoyable one. Yeah. So next time on Power Trip Gaming Retrospective, we'll review something better. Wait, will we? Can't remember. It's probably not gonna be better. I don't remember what's next. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> We're gonna try to review something better. We'll try, baby. Damn it! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>